So let's uh, start with a little foundational theory here for interpersonal communication. We're going to do a number uh, of uh, videos like this. I'm hoping this works better for you instead of just straight lecturing kind of a thing. Um, I'm going to use this one to introduce the idea of axioms. And uh, by definition, an axiom is a rule or a law upon which something must um, operate. Uh, we have physiological axioms of having to breathe uh, oxygen and nitrogen and, and process uh, electrolytes and proteins and stuff in order for us to keep alive. Well, these, these axioms work out the same way for interpersonal communication. In fact, they're the force of interpersonal communication. Uh, oh, and that reminds me of a movie, the, the whole idea of uh, the force. Here are the axioms, okay? The, uh, the laws upon which we go through and communicate. Okay, communication is packed, it's punctuated, it's inevitable, it's irreversible, it's unrepeatable, and there are content and relational dimensions. Did you get all that? Don't worry, we'll come back and do them all one by one here. Okay, so we'll start off with this idea that communication is packed. It's packed and it's packaged, and uh, it happens on two different levels. It happens on a verbal and a nonverbal level. Now, the verbal level, we have messages that are going back and forth that we're sending and receiving. We'll talk more about that in uh, the next video that gets into the transactional model. It's a three-part series that you need to watch there as well. Um, and there's another video that deals with nonverbal uh, communication. But here, in terms of the axiom that communication is packed, these are the two main areas that pack that in. Okay. Um, take nonverbal for example. Oh, 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 that movie. That's right. So in in the Force Awakens, um, we have this mysterious individual. We don't who know who they are as they're going through and and taking apart some incredibly giant star destroyer. And then we find out that it's Ray. Um, and along with um, understanding that in the character and then we see the the uh the things that ray wears her uh i don't even know what to call any of that but all those things come together in a package and create uh, meaning for us in terms of this character and who she is in fact that's really um, one of the finer points of great filmmaking is where we have that kind of uh, package continuity going on both verbally and non-verbally. We're introduced to another character in that film, K2SO, who um, has these remarkable human-like non-verbal attributes to him. And of course we know why, because you know he's based on a human being who's actually playing him and they're doing CGI to go through and put that together. Anyway, here we have a machine though that has become anamorphized in, in terms of the package in terms of uh, its ability to, to communicate, not just verbally, but non-verbally in terms of the emotions and the, uh, the fear and the angers and things that I won't spoil the movie for you. Actually, I, I am going to spoil the movie for you here a little bit later on. So if you haven't seen it and you want to avoid spoilers, tough, you have to watch this for the class as it goes. Um, Communication is packaged also in terms of uh, the conversations that we have, uh, both verbally and non-verbally, but there's usually a pattern that goes to that. We have some kind of an opening where we, we greet somebody and then we feed forward with that opening saying, hey, uh, uh, how you doing? You know, have you seen um, The Force Awakens? Feed forward, and they say, "Well, yeah." As a matter of fact, uh, I I did see that, and then we get to talk about it and take apart, you know, its plot points and get into things that way, and then um, we get into some level of feedback and say, "Well, gosh, you know, I can't, I can't hardly wait to see Rogue One." You know, hey, you want to come with me? Maybe we can set up a time we can go through and do that, and blah blah blah. And then we close with some kind of, well, it was good to see you and uh, you know, look forward to seeing you again as we go. So that, that constitutes a package, a conversational package um, that also accounts for this whole idea that uh, communication is packaged verbally, non-verbally, and then conversational packages that go on, okay? All right, moving right along. Communication is punctuated. Hmm. Not necessarily with uh, periods and exclamation points and semicolons 
and question marks, I guess in a way, um, we've all been involved in some kind of conversation and then something happens within that conversation that punctuates it, that moves it to uh, another area of conversation, another topic. You know, good movies like, oh, like this one, um, has these punctuated sequences in there just when we think she's going to go through and save the day. Boom, the bad guy shows up, right? Or just when they think they're making some kind of progress back toward the Millennium Falcon, they fall into a garbage pit. Or just when we think that, oh, there's this kind of a spoiler alert here because Han Solo comes across his son, and just when we think, well, it's punctuated. It becomes a, a really punctuated sequence here. And I had to use it with the scene from the Lego film because the uh, there aren't any from the other one. Communication is, uh, this is our third one, okay, is inevitable. You cannot not communicate. Everything about you communicates. Everything non-verbally about you communicates. Is there somebody out there that can interpret what it is you're wearing or where it is you're going or where it is that you're looking or what it is that you're saying you're communicating? You cannot not communicate unless, of course, you're a Jedi. And, and then you can go through and warp and turn around communication here. You know, BB-8, so he's, he's, he's rolling along and, and then he something catches his attention. He recognizes... Not a face, but a jacket. A jacket that's worn by Finn. A jacket worn by Finn that belongs to Poe. And BB-8 really likes Poe, even though he's a robot. Okay. Well, the jacket was inevitable. It was inevitable communication. And this robot goes through and sees the inevitable communication of the jacket. Here, lovingly pointed out by Jen. And then um, Poe. Communication is irreversible. This is uh, an axiom that most of us don't like because you can't take it back. And uh, often the words we want to take back are ones that we've expressed with some level of uh, anger or we've been escalated in some way and somehow that little jewel escapes our tongue and our teeth without our ability to go through and edit it or at least shut the hell up. And it goes out there and it ping pongs and ricochets around the relationship and you go, ah, oh, I didn't mean that. And that's a bunch of crap too, because he did. You meant it at the time. And that's why communication is irreversible. So I'm hoping one of the skills you're going to come out uh, of this class with is your ability to not have to take it back so often. Because communication is irreversible. And when you put it out there, you can't. There's no magic eraser. You can't rewind. You, you can't magnetize it. You can't edit it. It's out there. And it's going to go around. And like, like when he disclosed his familial relationship to the other guy okay or you can't ever take this back you know what i'm saying or this destroying a planet i mean how do you you can't take that back some people might say that that is um unrepeatable there now this one's kind of weird um this axiom that communication is unrepeatable because if we go through and we um, mediate communication, like we record it on some level, then of course it's repeatable, right? We go back and see the same film over and over and over again, and we might come away with something different every single time. Even though the segment itself was repeatable, it's unrepeatable because we, we now have been exposed to it, and so we're going to respond to it a little bit differently. In, uh, in the transactional model, I talk about the temporal context, okay, the passage of time. And that's what makes communication unrepeatable. As much as we'd like to go back and reenact that proposal, or we go back to that restaurant and have that nice meal, or we go on that road trip and try to have the same types of experiences that we had on our previous road trip, it's not going to happen. Because all those elements are different. The time of day, the mode of travel, the people that we're with, the people that surround us, the 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 ambience, the music, the it it you can't. It's unrebeatable. Um, somehow I have the segment of the trench. Oh, okay. So they're zipping through the trench here. This is in the first Star Wars, the fourth Star Wars. 
and uh, you know they got to go through and and uh, the, the the X-wings got to go and get the thingy down into the hole to blow up that other big thingy, and then uh, it was really really cool because back in 1976, 77, is that when that was? Um, we sat in theaters and this blew our freaking minds. Okay, to go through and watch this thing, and then this movie comes out, and guess what? Spoiler: There's a trench sequence <laughs> in it, and you know darn well that they got to go down inside this thing, right? Because that's what they did in the other one. But um, because of that axiom, and even though it's a movie, it wasn't the same thing. Uh, here's the last one, and this one's a little on the tricky side. Communication is actually communication has both content and relational dimensions to them and there's a video that I've put up uh, in this module that you need to watch um, called a tale of two brains content versus relational the tale of two brains uh, Mark Gunger uh, you need to watch that to go through and, and explain this a little bit better let me highlight this for you though first off this boils down to gender okay because men for the most part not everybody okay there are exceptions to everything here but men for the most part are content oriented we go from from one idea to the next we're we're into specific details that are that are combined and we're more interested we have the ability to go through and tell more useless statistics and facts about things because of that content orientation. We, we like to collect those things. Uh, it, in some sense, it gives us purpose. It gives us some kind of value being able to go through and put that out there. Um, women, not so much, okay? W women don't care about those kinds of details because they're relational. They care about nurturing. They care about developing. They care about getting along. They care about how others are gonna go through and get along. And again, not every woman's like that, okay? Some women have our content oriented and some men are relational. I work very hard for my relational side, my feminine side, and my wife appreciates that. Um, oh, well, you know, there's this guy, his name is um, uh, what's this? Guerrera and in Rogue One, and, and he's very content oriented, and we really don't know what his role is until a little bit later on, until we find out that he really be kind of kind of came uh, became a caregiver for Jin, okay? But um, he's concerned about uh, the fact that this other guy's been kidnapped, and he has the plans to the great destroying device that's out there, and is kind of caught up on that. Jin, on the other hand, while well, she's a little on the content oriented side too. Um, as a kid, she has this relational concept with Guerrera. Okay, Saw, that's his name, Saw Guerrera. And I, I don't think I'm a nerd because I know his name. Okay, I had to look it up for this presentation to put this out there. But anyway, she's she, she there's this relational thing with him. And we see this a little bit later on when they finally meet up and she's older. And, you know, he's still on the content side and she's on the relational side, happy to see him to see what's going on. Well, you know, watch Tale of Two Brains to get this idea, this notion here. So those are the axioms. Uh, go back and watch this video again. Take some careful notes as you go along and uh, make sure you understand how they function. If you have questions about this, find our contact and my contact information on Canvas and post it. Or better yet, go into discussion and post it there so everybody can benefit from your query. All right. We'll see you out there. Thanks for watching.